You know how when you were small, your parents always made sure that you wore slippers or shoes when you went outside? And you must have thought, oh, it's because they didn't want your legs to get dirty. Well, that's not it. This is the reason why they said this. If you ran outside barefoot, there's a good chance that you will step on something like a rusty nail. Now, this rusty nail can be a home for several bacteria, especially this particular one bacteria that we're going to talk about today. It's called the Clostridium tetani. You might not have heard this name, but you might have heard what this Clostridium tetani causes. It causes tetanus. I'm pretty sure you must have heard about tetanus because all of us have got the tetanus shot or it's better known as the TT shot. Bacteria that you see here, it can cause crazy things like locked jaw, spasms in your whole body. And these spasms can be so crazy that it can even break your bones and this can be fatal. Tetanus can also occur from tattoos, piercings, road traffic accidents, human or animal bites. How can this tiny bacteria do all these crazy things? Let's find out. When you step on a rusty nail lying on the ground filled with soil, your body has a cut there. And usually when you get a cut, that area has less amount of oxygen compared to the other parts of the body. And your body is warm. So this low oxygen plus warmness is a perfect condition for these tiny bacteria to live, to thrive. Because these bacteria are anaerobes. Anaerobes are any organisms that doesn't need oxygen or needs very little oxygen to survive. This is exactly why Clostridium tetani lives deep down in the soil, in the compact soil where there's low or less oxygen. This bacteria, Clostridium tetani, when it comes in contact with oxygen, it undergoes stress because it's not supposed to be in a place where there is oxygen, right? So that's a lot of stress. So what it does is it dies off, but it creates spores. These spores, you know what's the speciality of them? They can live in oxygen rich environment. Now that's even more crazy. The spores are the ones who manage to enter inside your body through that cut or the wound. And the low oxygen and warmness of your body, that's a perfect environment for these spores to make the bacterium to germinate and make Clostridium tetani bacterium. It also releases a toxin like a poison and that's called the tetanospasmin. Just like the word tetanospasmin, this causes tetanus which causes spasms in our body. Once tetanospasmin enters our body, it tries to go straight to the central nervous system, to our brain and our spinal cord. And you know what it does? binds to the inhibitory neurons in your body. Now, what are these inhibitory neurons? Body has excitatory neurons, motor neurons, and inhibitory neurons. Excitatory neurons, they pass messages to the brain and the brain converts them into signals and passes it to the motor neurons. Now, motor neurons, when they get the signal, they perform actions like swimming, running, or, you know, uh, cooking, or whatever you, if you want to move your hands, you need these motor neurons to act. Then only your body will move, your hands will move, your fingers will move. Inhibitory neurons, what do they do? They stop this action. When you want to stop writing or stop running, our inhibitory neurons act and they tell the motor neurons to relax or calm down. So that is like the stop signal. In tetanus, this tetanospasmin, the toxin that was released, this gets attached to the inhibitory neurons. Now what happens? Inhibitory neurons are blocked. Our brain doesn't get the signal to stop to stop writing or to stop moving, to stop running or swimming. So our body constantly is under the action of excitatory neurons which ask us to run or swim or dance, but we don't know how to stop. So this is a lot of pressure for the muscles because the muscles, are, they, they keep working. And that in the end 
results in spasms so extreme that sometimes even our bones break. Somewhere between 3 to 21 days, average of 14 days. The first and most common sign is log jaw or the spasms in your jaw. It is also accompanied with neck rigidity. Other symptoms is involuntary spasms in your stomach, stiffness all around your body, fast pulse, fever and sweating, and you might even have trouble swallowing. I want you to also remember that tetanus does not spread from person to person and it's usually seen in the warmer climates like summer. In newborns, it can cause infection after the umbilical cord is cut off. So this is called as tetanus neonatorium. I did mention about tetanospasmin, which is a toxin that I told you or the poison that is released by the spores. But there's another toxin that it releases and that is the tetanolysin. And this damages the tissue and creates an anaerobic environment. Some points that's very important for your exam is that this toxin enters the neuron in a retrograde manner. Now this bacterium is gram positive. An easy way to remember that is T looks like the positive sign. So tetanus, T for tetanus and the positive sign. So gram positive. On agar, you'll see swarming growth. There's another bacterium which shows swarming growth. That is proteus, but proteus is gram negative. This bacterium grows well on Robertson's cooked meat broth. On blood agar, it shows alpha hemolysis, which later turns into beta hemolysis due to the presence of the tetanolysin. The classical triad of tetanus symptoms involves trismus or log jaw, which is the spasm of the jaw. Next is rhizis sardonicus, which is the grin or the facial expression caused by the facial muscle spasm. Last one is opistotonus, which is the severe simultaneous spasm of all the muscles causing a backward arching of the head, neck and spine. Now that spine. we learned so much about tetanus and how dangerous it is, we need to know how to prevent it and the best tool is vaccination. CDC recommends tetanus vaccine for people of all ages and booster shots throughout their life. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and please, please, please click that subscribe button for me, will you? And if you have any subjects or topics that I should talk about, please leave a comment and thank you for watching.